Hi kids, it's Pastor Tony. I wanted to share with you for a few minutes another name of God. Remember, the reason that we're talking about the names of God is because every name teaches us more about who God is and what he's able to do. And as we learn more of his names, the Bible says that those who know your name, they put their trust in you. So before I talk to you about the next name of God, I want to play a game. A game called That's Almost Impossible. I'm going to give you a challenge. I'm going to challenge you to do four things that most people can't do. Now, maybe you can, and when I show you these four things, there's a good possibility you've tried to do them before. So whether you're by yourself or with other people at your house right now, let's see if you or anybody else in the room is able to do any of the four things that I'm going to challenge you to do. First of all, I challenge you to lick your own nose. Now, it's almost impossible for most people. Stick that tongue out. I'm trying to lick your own <laughs> I can't. Maybe you can. Anybody else in the room, are they able to lick their own nose? Their own nose. Not somebody else's, just your own nose. Challenge number two, ready? That's almost impossible to tickle yourself. Try. See if you can tickle yourself. Find that spot where you're most ticklish. Give it a little... Uh, <sighs> Doesn't work for me. Does it work for you? It doesn't work for most people. It's almost impossible to tickle yourself. How about this one? Can you raise one eyebrow? Now, most of us can raise two, but can you raise just one eyebrow? Are you able to do it? Maybe you're able to do it with both eyebrows, but there's one that you're better at. Can you raise just one eyebrow? Anybody else in the room? Are they able to raise one eyebrow? Last one, ready? Can you lick your own elbow? Okay, you got to be flexible to do this one. Not this bony part, but right on the end. Can you lick your own elbow? <sighs> Anybody? If you can, send me a picture. I'd love to see if you're able to do it. I can't. It's almost impossible for most of us to lick our own elbow. Did you know, though, that the Bible says there is something that it's impossible for God to do? I told my daughter this. She's six, and she looked at me, and she said, Dad, that's not true. God can do anything. And I said, well, wait a second. The Bible does say that there is something it's impossible for God to do. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18, the Bible says that it is impossible for God to lie. That's the name we're going to talk about today that has to do with this idea of it being impossible for God to lie. The name is Elamet. That means he is the God of truth. That means he is the God who when he says he will do something, it will happen. He can only tell the truth. And today, I want to tell you a story about two nations, Moab and Israel, to prove that he is the God of truth. In fact, there's a verse in the story that I'm going to tell you where we'll look at and find the story in the Bible that proves this point. But here's the story. Moab is, is they're in their region, and the nation of Israel is drawing close. The king of Moab starts to get worried, as do his people, because they've heard stories about Israel, how they have defeated other nations. And so Moab's king is worried, and he sends several of his men to hire a prophet of God to curse the people of Israel. Now this is strange to me, because a prophet in the Old Testament was a man who spoke for God to other people. And the king thought, I will hire one of God's prophets to curse God's people, Israel. So he sent money and other wealth to this man. And when those people arrived and shared the king's message and the king's money with the man, the prophet of God said, nope, can't do it. Not going to do it. God doesn't want me to. The people came back. They told the king. He said no. The king sent more money, more wealth, and eventually the prophet was convinced that he should curse God's people. So he tried several times. And every time that he went to curse God's people, the Bible says that the prophet ended up blessing the nation of Israel. During one of those times when he tried to curse the people, but instead blessed them, he made these comments about God. Elamet. He said this, God is not a man. He will not lie. He does not change his mind. What he says he will do, 
he does. What he promises, he keeps. That last part, what he promises, he keeps. He is the God of truth. This is so encouraging, such great news for us because there are so many promises in the Bible that God and Jesus made to people that he was talking to that are still true for us today. One of those promises can be found in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus was talking to a group of people who were physically suffering, spiritually and emotionally suffering, and he said to them, you out there who are listening, come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, who have a burden that you're carrying, and I will give you rest. Now, some of those people, they needed physical rest, and Jesus could provide it. Some of those people, they needed healing from sickness and disease, and Jesus said, come to me. I can comfort you. I can give you the rest that you need as you deal with this illness. Some of them, emotionally, they were struggling. The same is true for you and me, right? Some of us just feel exhausted. And God says, come to me, I can give you that rest that you need to recover. Some of us might be feeling sick. And God says, I can help you. I can help you deal with what's going on. I can give you the rest. And even emotionally, for us right now, in the middle of April 2020, we might be stuck at home. And for some of you kids, you're doing school in a way that you've never done it before. And that might be difficult. Mom, dad, somebody else is trying to teach you and it just feels exhausting and overwhelming and like a burden that you can't deal with. Or maybe you're spending more time with your family than you're used to and it just seems like everybody's kind of tripping over each other and in everybody else's space and you're at home and you're isolated and you're just saying, oh, this feels like a burden and I don't know how to deal with it. And Jesus says, come to me. Cast your cares upon me. Tell me what's going on and I can give you the comfort and the rest that you need. Another promise of God in Romans chapter 10 verse 13. A fantastic promise for every one of us. We're born as sinners, destined to punishment and separation from God forever. And the promise to us is whoever calls, any sinner who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. When we realize we're sinners, repent of our sin and ask God to forgive us, he says, I will give you salvation. I will rescue you from the punishment of sin. That is a promise that God made that God will keep. And that's an encouragement for you and me. Because when God makes a promise, he keeps it because he is Elamet, the God of truth. Another promise in the Bible, Matthew 28, 20. Jesus is finishing up his time here on earth. He's with his disciples for one of the last times. And as he's speaking to them, he says that I'm going to go away. But I want you now to spread throughout the world, to witness to others, to tell them the stories of my life and of my death and my resurrection, the gospel. And as you do that, I will be with you always. Not just when you're together with other Christians. Not just when you're at home or when people are agreeing with what you say. But no matter where you are and what you're doing, I will be with you always. That promise comes up again, that idea of God being with us. He says, I will never leave you. Look, when we go to witness to people, our neighbors, our friends, maybe even our own family, we're not alone. God is there with us. For us, again, in April 2020, we might feel isolated and separated from everybody that we know. And for you kids, it's the idea that I'm just not around the friends I normally spend time with. I haven't been able to get together with maybe a sports team. Or maybe there's some art that you're involved in. Or maybe you're involved in dance or whatever it may be. You feel separated from those people. You feel alone. You're feeling confused and worried about what's going to happen. And God says, I am there. Christians, if you are a believer, I am with you always. I haven't left you. I haven't changed even though the world seems way different right now. Those are the promises of God. And that's encouraging to us. And I encourage you to go search the Bible, to discover so many promises that he's made to you. And as you do that, don't forget this verse that we read today. God is not a man. God is not a human being. He does not change his mind. What he says he will do, 
he does. What he promises, he keeps. Another way to say it is simple. When God makes a promise, God keeps the promise. And he does that because he is Elamet, the God of truth. And now that we know that name and what he is like, we can put our trust in God, in who he is and what he does. These names of God are amazing. They tell us more about him, but they also teach us how we can be more like him. So let's pray that we will trust God more because what he says he will do. And let's pray that that will be the way we are to other people. That if we make a promise, that we would keep that promise. As an example to the world around us of Elamet, the God of truth. God, you are amazing. And you have promised so many things to us. And we can trust that when you make a promise, you will keep that promise. Thank you for being dependable. Thank you for being reliable. Thank you for giving us an example of how we can interact with the people around us. And as we interact, to know that we are not alone. You are with us. And if we're struggling, Lord, we can give you those burdens and you can carry them and you can give us the rest and the comfort we need. Thank you for our relationship with you as believers. And we just ask that we would continue to learn more about you so that we can learn to be more like you. And in your name we pray. Amen.